Hello and welcome everyone. This is Mohammed Inzabam from Sai Mehta Estate Coaching Center, Koti, Hyderabad. In the today's physics sadhana video lecture, we are going to be discussing about the topic heat and thermodynamics. In that, we are talking about all the miscellaneous questions. Already many videos has been updated. Around eight videos we have updated so far from the different topics of heat and thermodynamics physics chapter. Okay. So this is the last topic of miscellaneous questions. Let's cover all these miscellaneous questions in this very topic. Question number one. The temperature at which the volume of all gases becomes zero. We discussed about this. This is the diagram where we discussed about final volume becomes zero or final pressure becomes zero. This happens when pressure is constant, this happens when volume is constant, this is the temperature axis. And what is this value for the temperature? Final temperature is equals to minus 273.16 degree Celsius. So the final temperature, this is volume versus temperature. Okay, you can see this is the volume axis, this is the temperature axis. Temperature value is minus 273.16 where final volume is becoming zero, final pressure is becoming zero. And this temperature is called as absolute zero temperature. Absolute zero temperature. What is the temperature? Minus 273 degree Celsius. Okay. That is zero Kelvin too. Moving on to the next question. The next question is the product of pressure and volume. Pressure and volume. Pressure is Newton per meter square. Volume is meter cube. Meter square, meter square gets cancelled. Newton meter. Newton meter is joule. Unit of temperature is Kelvin, force Newton, power watts, work is Joule. So, the correct answer is going to become what? Joule. It is work. Option number 3. Moving on to the next question. The densities of two specific heats of two substances are in the ratio of density ratio. D1 by D2 is equals to 5 by 6. Specific heat ratio S1 by S2 is equals to 3 by 5. Then, Ratio of thermal capacity per unit volume. What is the thermal capacity? Thermal capacity. Thermal capacity is total heat required. Total heat required to increase or change the temperature by 1 degree Celsius for a body. For a body. We know that thermal capacity is for 1 kg. If you take total kg, then it is going to become what? Uh, specific heat for is for 1 kg. Thermal capacity is for total mass. So, specific heat into total mass is going to give you thermal capacity. You can write here specific heat as S also. Mass formula is density into volume. Density into volume. So, thermal capacity U divided by volume is equals to D into S. Where D is density, S is specific heat. He is asking about ratio. So, u by v1 divided by u by v2 is equals to d1 by d2 into s1 by s2. This is the ratio of th uh, thermal capacity per unit volume. d1 by d2 given in the question is 5 by 6. Specific heat ratio is given as 3 by 5. 5 by cancel, 3 ones are 3 twos are. So, what is the final answer? 1 is to 2. Remember the formula for thermal capacity per unit volume? That is density into specific heat. Density into specific heat. So, the correct answer for this question is going to become 1 is to 2. Go for it. Specific heat is amount of heat energy required to increase the temperature by 1 degree Celsius for unit mass. If total mass is asking, then it is thermal capacity. So, if you multiply the specific heat with mass, then it is going to become the formula for thermal capacity. Moving on to the next question. The next question given over the body is according to kinetic theory of gases, the molecule of gas behaves like According to thermal, according to the kinetic theory, molecules will absorb the heat energy and convert it into work energy. There is no absorption. There is no absorption of energy. When this is going to be happening for ideal gas molecules? When these molecules are perfectly elastic rigid molecules. Perfectly elastic rigid spheres. This is going to become your correct answer. Okay. Go through it. So, moving on to the next question. The next question is water is used in car radiated as coolant because of if it is density is more then what happens uh, 
it will be taking more amount of pumping energy. So, this is the wrong answer. High thermal conductivity, we are having different materials of high thermal conductivity, but we are using water. So, this is also the wrong answer. Free availability, air is free available, but we are not using air, we are using the water. So, this is also the wrong answer. High specific heat is the correct answer. That means, it, it will absorb more amount of heat energy to raise this temperature by 1 degree Celsius. So, the correct answer is high specific heat. Moving on to the next question. A glass of water contains ice cube melting on it. When ice melts, the level of water in the glass is. We know that when ice is converting its state to water, it will contract. Let us say this is specific volume, this is temperature. So, it is going to be water contracting while converting from ice to water. Two contraction will be there. This is 4 degree Celsius, this is 0 degree Celsius. And then it will expand up to 100 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, when ice is converting into water, melting into water, then what happens? Ice will contract. So, if we say that here, let us say this is the ice cube. It will be 10 percentage outside, 90 percentage it will be inside. Okay. So, when ice is going to be contracting when melting is happening, so, we can say that it is going to be adjusting itself inside the same volume of water. That means, level remains water same. Level remains same. Remember that ice contracts. Ice contracts when melting to water. Okay. So, this extra 10 percentage is going to be adjusting itself because ice is contracting. So, the level remains what? Same. So, this is going to become your correct answer. Okay. Go through it once. Next question is, okay. the molecular kinetic energy of 1 gram of helium at 127 degree Celsius. Assume the molecular weight of helium is 4 and R equal to 8.314 joule per mole Kelvin. We know the molecular kinetic energy formula is 3 by 2 n times of RUT. 3 by 2 number of moles is mass divided by molecular weight R u t. Okay. So, we can say 3 divided by 2 mass is what is the gram? 1 gram. 1 gram divided by molecular weight that is 4. R u 8.314 joule per mole Kelvin. Okay. Joule per mole Kelvin into water temperature. Temperature 127 plus 273, 400 Kelvin. So, you can write like this, 4 1s are 4 hundreds are 2 1s are 2 4 are 8. 2 1s are 2, remaining 1. 2 5s are 10, remaining is 1. 2 7s are 14. Okay. 4 3s are around 12. 12 times of 100, 1200. So, exact value here is 1247 joules. 1247 joules. Okay, go through it. Unit, if you see n value, n unit is water, n value is what? Mole. Ru value is water, joule per mole Kelvin. Temperature is water, Kelvin. So, Kelvin, Kelvin, cancel, mole, mole, cancel. What is the final unit going, you are going to get here? Joule. So, this is the final unit in terms of joules. Okay, go through it. Moving on to the next question. The next question given over the board is 1 gram of steam is sent into 1 gram of ice. We know this diagram. Here, this is 1 gram of ice. Let us say it is here. 1 gram of ice requires to convert it into water around 80 calories. Okay, 80 calories. Similarly, 1 gram of water required to convert its final state up to here. This formula is m c delta t. Here the formula is m into l. This is also m into l. Here l value is let it of vaporization. That is around 540 calories. Okay. So, now carefully watch. If you supply 540 calories, then what happens? Uh, Heat is going to be water rejected, you know, heat is going to be getting absorbed. If 80 calories it is going to take, it will be converting from 1 ice, 1 gram of ice to 1 gram of water. Then, 
If I supply mc delta d, what is mass? 1 gram. Let me write it here. m into c into delta d. 1 gram of water. 1, one calorie is the specific heat. Delta d is 100 minus 0. That means it requires further more 100 calories to reach this point. Okay. If we supply 80 calories, it will come from ice to water. 80 calories. If we supply 100 calories, then it will go from where to where? From the ice to 100 degrees Celsius. Now, it's having capacity of how much? 540. So, 80 it will come here. Around 100 it will come here. So, this is the final position of water steam that is 180 calories less. Okay, because 180 calories is supplied to here. So, what is the final temperature of steam? 100 degrees Celsius. What is the final temperature of water? 100 degree Celsius. So, the final temperature will be coming to 100 degree Celsius. Go through it. Okay. Moving on to the next question. From the isotherm drawn from Andrews experiment, it can be inferred that. Okay. Andrews experiment given the isotherm that is constant temperature lies. Okay. Let us say this temperature is around some 48 degree Celsius. Now, temperature decreases. Okay, let us say it is some 40 degrees Celsius. Now, you can see some kink is there, some deviation is there. Let us say this is 31.4 degrees Celsius. And when further temperature is reduced, then you can say constant temperature conversion of vapor to liquid. That is due to compression. Once we do the compression, then what happens? Vapor will be converted to liquid. That is below 31.4 degrees Celsius. This is isotherms for carbon dioxide. So, now what does it indicate? It indicates that carbon dioxide is going to be behaving as which gas? Perfect gas. Okay. okay. Go through it. From the isothermal, isotherm drawn from the Andrews experiment, it can be inferred that there is continuity of state, there is discontinuity of state. Gases like carbon dioxide and hydrogen cannot be liquefied. No, they can be liquefied below its critical temperature and critical pressure. What is the critical temperature we can say there? Around 31.4, 31.1 degree Celsius. That is the critical temperature. Critical temperature. Okay. Below which, below which gas can be liquefied. Okay. So, carbon dioxide is a perfect gas. Next one. M grams of 100 degrees Celsius of steam is mixed with 200 grams of ice. Similar question that is this is 200 grams of water ice. Okay. So, it is going to be converting its state from ice to water. Then water is going to be converting its state from where to where from 0 degree Celsius water to final, final temperature is given as 40 degree Celsius. So, this is 40 degrees Celsius. This is the amount of heat which is going to be absorbed by the ice. Okay. Similarly, vaporization of water is taking place at 550, heat is 80 calories uh, and uh, value of M E is dash. Okay. Now, the steam is there here of having M grams. It will be converting its states by utilizing this 540 calories and now it will be coming down to 40 degree Celsius from 100 degree Celsius. So, let us say this is the heat absorbed and let us say this is the heat rejected. First find out the heat absorbed. Heat absorbed is equals to what is the value? 200 grams of ice into latent heat. What is the latent heat here? 80 calorie. What is the latent heat value here? 80 calorie. So, 200 times of 80 it will convert its state from ice to water plus uh, mc delta t. This is the mass of ice, latent heat of ice plus m into c into delta t. Mass of ice is 200 grams. Specific heat of water is 1 calorie. Change in temperature is how much now? From 40 minus 0, this is 40. 2 4 is 8. 8000. 2 8 is 16. 16000. Okay. Go through it. This is the total amount. 8 plus 16, 8 3 is 24. So, 24000 calories. 24000 calories. Go through it. So, this is the total amount of heat which is going to be absorbed by the ice. Now, which should be equal to now heat rejected by the steam. Mass of the steam is M, we do not know. 
L that is 540 plus mass C delta T. M we can take common here, latent heat of vaporization that is 540 plus C delta T. What is the C value for water? 1 delta T is 100 minus 40. 100 minus 40 is 60. 540 plus 60. 600. So, this is 600 M. Now, this is the amount of heat which is going to be rejected. This is the amount of heat which is absorbed. Now, equalizing these two, 24,000 is equals to 600 M. 0, 0, 0, 0, cancel. 6, 1 is 6, 4 is so, M is equals to how many grams now? 40 grams. That is 40 grams of ice is what we require. This is your answer. Go through it. Next one. In thermodynamics, heat and work are, we know that there are two types of functions. One is point function, another one is path function. Point functions are properties, properties, pressure, volume, temperature, entropy, internal energy, enthalpy. You will be rep representing like this dp, dv, dt, ds, du, u2 minus u1, dh, h2 minus h1. D S S two minus S one. These are called as exact differentials. Exact differentials. Whereas path functions are heat and work. Heat and work. This is the area under T S diagram. T S diagram. Work is the area under P V diagram. And we know that area is dependent on what uh, path. That's why these are called as which functions? Path functions. These are also called as inexact differentials. And they are denoted with symbol what uh, d dash w, delta w, d dash q, delta q, w 1 to 2, q 1 to 2. 1 to 2 is a process. It is going to be having some path. Path changes, area changes, heat and work also changes. So, path functions are what? Heat and work are path functions. Go through it. Moving on to the next question. The next question given about the board is compressed air which is coming out from a punctured football. It is similar to that of what uh, nozzle. High speed. High speed. Okay, very fast process. Very fast process is called as adiabatic process because it does not require enough time to propagate. When time is not there, then heat transfer is equal to what? A zero. Right? As it is moving very fast, very speed, then what happens? Temperature decreases. It will become what? A cool. So this cooling is going to be happening in which expansion? Adiabatic expansion. Okay. That is actually it is done in a Joel Thomson experiment where heat transfer equal to 0. Better one is throttling expansion. But here throttling is not there in the option. So the correct answer is adiabatic expansion. Let's move on to the next question and the final question of this miscellaneous 2024 EPE set. Standard constant volume gas thermometer cannot use any vapor as working substance because vapors are not which gases? Perfect gases and constant volume this thermometer is depending upon, is dependent on water. This constant volume gas thermometer is valid for, valid for perfect gases and vapors are not perfect gases. This is the final question. Go through it once. Okay. Very important questions we have discussed uh, in the, uh, all the topics. Make sure you utilize these videos and uh, practice well. With one more video, I will come back tomorrow. Till then, keep learning with SaiMeda.in. And don't forget to subscribe our channel and press the bell icon to be notified for every update from SaiMeda Hyderabad. Thank you very much, guys.